So, as we all know, Honkai Star Rail is coming out on the 26th of April, which is only around 3 weeks away, and in this video I'm going to try and answer one very important question that I think all Genshin players who are interested in Star Rail, including myself, should ask themselves before playing the game. Is Star Rail going to be enjoyable for a Genshin player? The reason why I think this should be thought about very clearly is because of how Genshin and Star Rail are two very different games. Sure, the graphics and certain aspects of both games are quite similar, like how artifacts exist in Star Rail at the form of relics, but at the same time, most aspects of the two games are completely different. Personally, I think that people shouldn't play Star Wars with the same sort of expectations towards Genshin because if you do, it is very likely that you aren't going to enjoy the game as much when it releases. And so in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the combat, pushing system, how you build characters, and the game modes that are going to be in 1.0 of Star Wars. And from there, I'm then going to come to a conclusion as to whether I would recommend other Genshin players to play Star Wars. Of course, people play Genshin because of many different things, such as some people play for the combat of Genshin, while others might play the game for the characters, and so I'm going to take these factors into consideration as well. Alright, without further ado, let's start with the combat in Star Rail. Here we can already see a huge difference between both games. Star Rail on one hand is a turn-based RPG, while on the other hand, Genshin is an action RPG. So the combat in Star Rail works like this. Before entering a battle, your armfield character can either normal attack or use their E skill to damage an enemy's toughness before actually going into the turn-based part of the battle. Each enemy has three elements that they are weak to and attacking them with those elements before entering a battle will damage their toughness bar more quickly. When that bar becomes empty, weakness break is triggered and depending on the element of the attack that procs the break, the effects on the screen right now will be applied to the broken enemy. There are a total of 7 elements in the game right now and unlike Genshin Impact, there is no elemental reaction mechanism in Star Rail. Character on your teams and enemies all attack in an order based on their speed stat. The more speed a character has, the more likely it is going to attack first. When it is your character's turn, there are a total of three different attacks that you can use, basic, skill, and ultimate. You can also see the star looking bar next to the basic icon, in which performing a skill consumes some of the stars and performing a basic generates some of the stars. The amount of stars that is consumed and generated depends on your character of course. The ultimate is a bit different. It fills up when you perform a basic or a skill and also when your character takes damage. When it is fully charged up, it will glow and you can use it despite the turn not being your character's. One thing that I really have to say is how I think all characters in the game right now have their own ultimate animations, and so that's one cool thing to keep an eye out for. Overall, I would say that the combat system in Star Rail is very different from the one in Genshin, so for me, I think Star Rail's combat is going to be good and I can't wait to try it out. Moving on to the wishing system in Star Rail. Essentially, the pity system and everything works the same as in Genshin. They are called warps, and you have the departure banner, standard banner, and the limited time banner. One warp costs 160 stellar jade or one pass, the normal passes are for the standard and departure banners, while the special pass is for the character and light cone limited time banners. One 4 star character or light cone is guaranteed for every 10 warps, and one cool thing about the standard banner is that after doing 300 warps, you'll be able to choose the 5 star character that you want to get. Unfortunately for the light cone warp right now, it doesn't have the epitomized path system like Genshin, but since there is only going to be one 5 star on banner light cone, the pity system still works the same as the one in the character banner, and so you don't have to worry that much about that. Star Glitter and Stardust also exist in Star Rail and they are called Starlight and Ember respectively. Every free Starlight cone gives you 20 Ember and the rest are a bit of a mouthful to say it all out so it's going to be on the screen. You can spend 20 Starlights at the store to buy one pass or a special pass and you can also spend them on other useful resources as well in the store and the store functions just like the one that we have in Genshin. Another nice thing about the departure warp is that you are guaranteed one 5 star character within 50 pulls and if you are lucky enough you might even get more than one 5 star character before the departure banner goes away after 50 warps. I'd say the gacha system in Star Wars right now is going to be something that Genshin players will like a lot. There are going to be a lot of free rewards during the launch version of Star Rail, so hopefully we'll be starting off our journey in Star Rail with a couple of 5 star characters. Now let's talk about character building in Star Rail. I've mentioned this already but there are a total of 7 elements in the game and there are also 7 paths and they are essentially character classes. For example, a hunt path character like Seelie deals high single target damage and a harmony path character like Branya provides offensive support to your other characters. The path of a character indicates what they are designed to do and it also tells you what light cones you should use on them. Light cones are characters weapons and unlike the case in Genshin, any character can wield any light cone in a game regardless of their element or their path, which I think lots of Genshin players would like a lot including myself, especially during the first few weeks of playing Star Rail. However, one 
one thing to keep in mind is that the passives of the light cones are linked to one of the seven paths and their effects are only active on characters of the specified path. For example, the signature light cone for Seelie in the night, it's tied with the hunt path and its amazing passive would only work on characters who are on the hunt path. The way that you level up or ascend light cones is basically the same as Genshin and you can refine light cones as well by obtaining 4 extra copies and in Star Route, it's called Superimposed for some reason. Leveling characters up works pretty much the same as in Genshin. A character's max level in Star Route is 80 and you will be able to ascend characters as well. You do this by defeating weekly bosses which can be charged 3 times per week and use the material that you get from defeating them along with the other overworld monster materials to level up your characters. Talents are called traces in sorrow and every character has a basic attack, skill, ultimate talent which is the passive and also a technique which is the overall ability of your character. Traces work similarly to a skill tree in other games and upgrading it would give your character new passives, stat bonuses and more. Artifacts are also a thing in sorrow and they are called relics. In Star Rail, it is a 4 plus 2 system in which you have the 4 piece set bonus along with another 2 piece set bonus. The four pieces are the head, hands, body and feet, and the two pieces are the planisphere and the link rope. The main stats and substats that you can get on each piece should be shown on the screen right now. You get the first four pieces of the relics from Caverns of Corrosions, which are the artifact domain equivalent of Genshin, and by spending some Trailblaze power, which are essentially your resin in Star Rail. To obtain the remaining two pieces, you would have to complete the simulated universe game mode, and I'll explain that later. You'll receive the remaining two pieces as a reward after completing it and spending your Trailblaze power. The max level for a 5 star relic is 15, and it is 12 for a 4 star relic. Every three level ups would upgrade a pre existing substat or create a new one if there aren't already. 4 substats. Once again, one very nice thing that Star Rail has over Genshin is how there is a special item that you can obtain from the free version of the Battle Pass that allows you to create a relic of whichever piece, be it a hands piece or a body piece, with your desired main stat as long as you have enough relic fragments to create it. One recycled 5 star piece gives you 10 fragments and you would need 100 fragments for this. Last but not least, we have Eidolons, which are the constellation of Star Rail. Each character has 6 Eidolon upgrades and unlocking each one gives the character permanent buff. Eidolins are received by obtaining duplicate copies of the character and I have to say that the Eidolin section screen looks so much cooler than the one that we have in Genshin for constellations. I really like how the shards reflect and they look like fragments of the character's personality or memory. In general, I feel like the character building system in Star Rail is like an improved version of the one that we have in Genshin currently. I'd say that character building in Star Rail is just going to be a tiny bit easier than Genshin and lots of you guys will prefer it once the game comes out officially on the 26th. And finally, let's talk about the game modes in Star Rail. There are quite a lot of game modes, so I'll try and summarize them and make it as short as possible. So first of all, we have Trailblaze missions, and they are essentially the main storyline quests, like the Archon quest in Genshin. Then there are companion missions that are like character quests and hangout quests in Genshin. But in Star Rail, these companion missions all have voiceovers, so it would be less boring as in Genshin, whereas sometimes it might feel like you're being forced to read something that you don't want to. Side quests in Star Rail are called adventure missions, and they can be found all over the overworld map. One very different thing about Star Rail is that there aren't any daily commissions, instead you have the daily training system where you complete activities that involve combat, interacting with stuff from the overworld and more. To fill up a bar which gives you 160 stellar jade per day. It's very nice that you can choose a combination of different activities to do as they all have a different value. Most of them are worth 100 points while some of them are worth 200, with the maximum reward requiring 500 points. You also have one daily mission per day but it isn't tied into the daily training system. Now let's move on to game modes which require Trailblaze power to collect its rewards. So first of all you have your artifact domains which are called Cavern of Corrosion in Star Rail. Then there are the Calyxes which are the ley line slash domains in Star Rail. However unlike Genshin, there are taxes that give your character XP materials, Lycone XP materials and also credits which are the Mora equivalent of Star Rail. There are also taxes for each of the 7 paths that give your character trace upgrade materials and also Lycone ascension materials. There is a rotation schedule for the path Calyxes and the also should be on the screen right now. You can increase the number of waves of enemies that you are going to be fighting to speed things up and each wave has 10 trailblaze power with 6 waves being the maximum amount of waves that you can face each time before you start a character challenge. For character ascension materials, you get them from the stagnant shadow stages with each stage costing 30 trailblaze power to do. Boss materials are received from the echo of war and you can collect rewards up to 3 times a week since each of the weekly bosses only have one type of boss material drop. This is actually quite helpful when it comes to building characters and finally, you have the simulated universe and the Forgotten Hall game modes. Both game modes are sort of like content in between mid and end game of Star Rail, and the Forgotten Hall is more like the traditional Abyss from Genshin. The first 
15 stages give you a one time reward including Stellar Jade, while the last 10 stages reset periodically like floor 9 to 12 of the Abyss from Genshin. Simulated Universe on the other hand is more like a roguelike game mode where you get buffs and fight enemies in a simulated world in which there are a total of 6 worlds to complete, all stages in each world are semi-randomized, and you get link ropes, planet spheres, and also other goodies like Stellar Jade as rewards. So far, I think that this game mode is going to be the hardest one out of all the ones that I have covered today, while also being the most interesting one because of how the stages and enemies that you are fighting are so randomized, meaning that the experience that you get every single time will be different. So to conclude today's video, we have looked at certain things in Sora that I think are going to be really important to Genshin players when deciding whether or not you should play this latest title of Hoyoverses. That being said, however, I think ultimately since this game is a turn-based game, not every Genshin player will like Star Rail. While it is a gacha game in its essence, the most appealing USP about Star Rail is its combat after all. And so this is most likely going to be the deciding factor for a lot of you guys. I personally can't wait any longer for the game to come out, but for the meantime, I hope this video is going to help you understand how promising Star Rail looks. I'm going to be making Star Rail content when it comes out, but don't worry, Genshin content isn't going away. That is going to be it for today's longer than usual sort of video. Like and subscribe because we're so close to 500 subscribers and it would be amazing if we can hit 500 subs before Star Rail releases. That's going to be it for today and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!